Things look pretty quiet inside Union Station right now, but there is a great deal that's going on, and most of it right under our feet. It's the construction of LA's Red Line, and we have special permission to go inside and take a peek. With opening day approaching fast, the line's first five terminals are nearing completion, and trains are already taking test runs. John Bird is RTD's rail division manager for the Red Line. Rail is uh, going to be a new exciting force, I think, in L.A., and I think it's going to impact L.A. significantly, the Red Line in particular, because the Red Line is going to be alleviating a lot of traffic congestion along one of the major corridors in the United States. The Red Line environment is going to be basically an underground transit system, such as London, New York. It is, uh, it is a new system, and consequently it's going to be fresh and clean, and we hope to keep it that way, to invite more of the ridership out. Uh, it's going to be an automated uh, system. Uh, the trains will be able to operate in automatic, uh, with the aid of an operator uh, monitoring the doors at stations only. So uh, they'll be able to see a lot of new technology and a lot of new uh, systems that will be coming aboard with the Red Line. The Red Line is more than a transportation system. It's a unique addition to LA's image of itself. To find out more, we're going to go to MacArthur Park, 3.4 miles away. And we can forget about finding our car or looking for a parking place. The trip will take us just seven minutes. The Red Line is more than just subway trains. It's also a rich environment for art. For example, here at the MacArthur Park Station, commuters are greeted by large murals created by the artist Francisco Letelier. Letelier is only one of many artists whose work will enrich the Red Line's underground environment. Working in consultation with the communities around each station, the Los Angeles County Transportation Commission is committed to an ambitious program of subway art. Jessica Cusick is project director. What we're building here is a transit system which is a set of linkages, if you will. We are linking up neighborhoods, we're linking up communities, we're linking up points on a map. And as we do that, we feel that we have a responsibility to do more than that. And one of the ways in which we can do more than that is through the art. The art is going to provide the kind of cultural linkages that we don't have um, right now. Thurman Statham's yet-to-be-named sculpture at MacArthur Park suggests the variety and unexpected qualities of much of Red Line art. There are five terminals in the first phase of L.A.'s new Red Line. MacArthur Park at Wilshire and Alvarado, 7th Street at 7th and Flower, Pershing Square at 5th and Hill, the Civic Center, and the System Hub at Union Station. Every terminal has its own unique art environment. Our first stop heading east is the 7th Street Metro Station, a meeting place for the Red Line subway and the Blue Line that connects downtown Los Angeles to Long Beach. Here, Joyce Kozloff created a tribute to science fiction films and movie monsters. Her work is installed along the walls of the station's east and west mezzanines. At the station's Hope Street entrance, commuters are greeted by these hand-painted tiled murals created by Roberto Gil de Montes. They've been described as an allegorical journey from heaven to earth. A third work at 7th Street Metro is called Unity, created by artist Tom Etherton. It's a true transit art experience. Etherton used fiber optics to create light paintings visible only to travelers inside the Blue Line Tunnel. Our next stop on the Red Line's underground gallery is Pershing Square. Here, we are met by striking neon sculptures by Stephen Antonakis. Neon art is especially appropriate here. In 1926, America's very first neon sign was built just a short distance away. The next stop in the Red Line's underground gallery is the Civic Center. Here, an unusual flight of fancy hovers overhead. These figures suspended from the ceiling above the Civic Center Terminal could well be the most talked about piece of Red Line art. Called I Dreamed I Could Fly, they're the work of artist Jonathan Borofsky. Thank you. 
Only a few more minutes takes us to our final stop, Union Station. This is the historic hub of Los Angeles' emerging 21st century transit system. Here, surface trains and subways link with the RTD buses that tie it all together. At the east entrance to Union Station's Red Line Terminal, a mural by Terry Shunovan reinforces a sense of historical connections. These realistic images have been described as part of a window into the past. The old Union Station building is an architectural landmark of great significance. What we wanted to do at Union Station in terms of the subway was to create a linkage to that old station and to reinforce the union, if you will, of the old and the new. When you ride the red line, you're going to get a transit experience like none other. I mean, nobody has done it quite the way we've done it. You'll be riding trains that are state-of-the-art trains and going through stations that are really state-of-the-art. And what you'll have an opportunity to do at the same time is sort of make a tour of, of what's important in terms of contemporary art. You'll get a different vision at each station, you'll get a different point of view, and you'll get something exciting that you can take home with you. The most obviously practical of the red line art is the series of granite benches created by the sculptor Christopher Sproat. It isn't a bad place to sit while you're waiting for the future of transportation in Los Angeles. All of the red line art, of course, isn't going to get us to our destinations any faster. But an attractive environment can be that added incentive to get more of us out of our automobiles and into subway trains. Buses and the blue line mean the RTD to most of us. But there's a lot going on behind the scenes here at RTD's Regional Telephone Information Center. From 6 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week, as many as 64 telephone operators are standing by here to answer your calls and questions about the RTD's routes and services. Doug Anderson is the RTD's Customer Information Manager. The RTD Telephone Information Center uh, for Information for Transit is the largest uh, of its kind in the United States. Transit Information Raquel. Besides the operators, we have recently added some new systems that allow customers to call in and access the database via a touch-tone phone and get a synthesized voice to give them information. Uh, you can get faxed itineraries sent to your workplace. And shortly, we will have the ability for anyone with a personal computer to be able to dial up and access the database and, again, get custom itineraries for bus and rail throughout the region. For more information about RTD routes, call 213-626-4455. That's it for this show. You know the day may come when a fuel that many of us use for cooking our food may power the family car. Next time, we're going to take a look at a common source of household energy that already is providing clean air transportation. It's compressed natural gas. And I'll take a day trip up the California coastline to see another clean air fuel in action. I'll take a ride on Santa Barbara's popular weekend electric buses. From buses to private cars, trains, van pools, there are many ways to get to work in Southern California. But which way is best? We'll ask some commuters to size up the transportation competition. All this and a lot more next time on Transit 2000. We'll see you then.